The American automotive industry was an interesting era during the 80s. A big segment of the market was occupied by premium cars that catered to the wealthier side of the society. These luxury cars came with a host of luxury features and mostly had the latest trends in the automobile industry at the time. When you think of the most expensive American cars during the 1980s, you might think of the all-new Lincoln Navigator or even the Cadillac Escalade V-Series. But history has some unique names when it comes to expensive cars. Let's briefly discuss these cars from the most expensive to the least. Consulier GTP was inspired by race cars of the day. It had a composite monocoque chassis and a carbon Kevlar body that's powered by a turbo-boosted engine, the first road car ever to use such construction at the time. The Consulier was one of those ahead-of-its-time cars, built between 1985 and 1999. The GTP had all the right specs, as well as the street cred of a supercar. It tipped the scales at 2,200 pounds, and according to the ConsulierGTP.com, only about 60 to 100 GTPs were built. But what went wrong and why do we rarely hear about Mosler's cars today? That is because Mosler Automotive only built 83 consular GTPs between the year 1985 and 1996, due to which the car never found its market. Now throw in its heavy price tag and challenging looks, it's quite literally failed to grasp much attention. Next on our list is the DMC DeLorean, which is the infamous car from Back to the Future movies. These were pretty expensive, but apart from its cool visuals, you don't get what you paid for. Yes, one would expect a car this expensive to tick all the right boxes, but the DMC DeLorean was not a particularly great car. Its maneuverability was pretty mediocre with an engine that produced 130 horsepower at best, so it did not allow for much excitement behind the wheel. The only thing that gave this car an ironic status within the car community was its portrayal in the Back to the Future movies, which I have to admit made this car look pretty cool. This sports car was first introduced in 1981, and its production continued till the year 1983, plus only about 9,000 units of this car were made. The Corvette C4 makes it second on the list at a price of more than $31,000. This one has a bit of a dramatic story to it. The Chevrolet Corvette, once a great icon, also known as the America's sports car, which soon lost its light due to the decades of emissions regulations, economics ups and downs, and a crippling fuel crisis. So when the Chevrolet Corvette C4 launched, specifically the ones with the convertible top, General Motors had created a car with the goal of restoring the Corvette name to greatness, which it did indeed. But as compared to the coupe, the convertible sold nearly four times less. The Corvette was not exactly a cheap ride. Even at that time, the C4 was very impressive because it came well equipped with a host of standard features like air conditioning, AM FM stereo, power windows, and power steering. The Cadillac Eldorado Biarritz convertible was the longest running American personal luxury car. It was truly one of the most exclusive cars marketed by Cadillac and its premium price backs that point. The 1984 Eldorado Biarritz convertible was part of the 10th generation of the impressive Eldorado model line and it came loaded with all the necessary luxury features to pamper the elite members of the society. These 10th gen Eldorados were smaller in terms of size compared to the 9th and 11th gen. Although a bit small, these Eldorados were still decently sized cars which provided good room. Cadillac offered the Beer Reads convertible edition only for the year 1984 and 1985. This was the highest priced GM production car at the time, competing directly with Corvette at around $31,286. Although the GNX was an unusual car, at least in the 80s, it's probably one of the coolest cars on our list. I mean, this was the hottest American-built performance car you could buy at the time since it was faster than Ferraris and Lambos. With the GNX, GM opted not to go for their obligatory V8 power plant and instead use a turbocharged V8 that cranked out 245 horsepower and a 33 pound-feet of torque. 
and to prove that independent testing revealed that this Turbo V6 did in fact make closer to 300 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, and for a car made in the 80s, this is truly exceptional. Sadly, just 547 units of GNX were ever built, so only the lucky ones have had the chance to drive this masterpiece. The Lincoln Continental Mark VI was a full-size luxury flagship from that time, which was even slotted above the Lincoln Town Car during the early 80s. Lincoln offered designer series for their Continental, which included big names like Cartier, Bill Blast, Pucci, as well as Givenchy. Each designer featured its own exclusive exterior and interior touches, which also included additional equipment. Among the four designers, the Bill Blast edition was the most expensive by a few hundred. This trim was known for its dark blue metallic paint with white upper accents exterior, along with midnight blue and white accents in leather as well as cloth in the interior. This trim ticked all the right boxes in terms of luxury with its lacy spoke cast aluminum wheels, personalized panel link plate, twin comfort lounge seats and the OG Bill Blast anchor on the side panels to let everyone know just how expensive your car is. These are honestly rare cars to come across since they were hardly ever bought due to the insane price tag, but at the end of the day, they're still pretty cool. GM debuted the Cadillac Seville as a regular four-door sedan in 1975. However, they decided to shake things up for the second generation that was launched in 1980. They completely redesigned the car with a long hood and trunk that looked much similar to an old Rolls Royce. This was the infamous model with the distinctive bustle back design. Although a pretty risky move, but guess what? It worked like a charm. People went crazy for this Cadillac. Even when they switched it from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive, nobody seemed to care much about this change because as long as it looked fancy, they were willing to spend their money on it. But apart from the looks, this car was the epitome of luxury and the first American car with diesel as standard. In the passing years, the demand for this body style amongst collectors has more than doubled. The name Fleetwood and Broom were typically used by Cadillac at various times to indicate the luxury and exclusivity of their cars. The cars that bore those names were often top of the line with features that set them apart from all other Cadillac models. In the 1970s, Cadillac's Fleetwood was so big that it needed a separate zip code just to park it, so they decided to shrink it down and boy did they nail the 1980 version of the Fleetwood Broom. Although the size shrunk a bit, it did not make the car any cheaper. A host of features like remote controlled outside rear view mirrors, power steering and automatic climate control made this one of Cadillac's most expensive models at that time. This Cadillac was a masterpiece, much like a work of art on wheels. Fleetwood Broom came with a boatload of luxury and you could even get it in a two-door version. The Chrysler Imperial Frank Sinatra Edition was Chrysler's most expensive car at the time which was newer, more exclusive and more advanced than any of the competitors. The Imperial's exterior was a successful fusion of traditional luxury car styling cues along with a very modern streamlined design. The Imperial also had various luxury and convenience features which gave it a place amongst the top tier of luxury cars in its day. Frank Sinatra was also hired as a spokesman for the release of a special Frank Sinatra edition. However, even with Frank Sinatra promoting the Imperial, it couldn't prevent the Imperial from being a complete sales flop. There were two major reasons for this downfall. One being its heavy price tag during one of the worst recessions in US history when sales of luxury cars were way down. And the second was its fuel-injected 5.2-liter V8, which had trouble with the electronic engine management system. Even so, the Imperial was a great luxury car with beautiful styling cues that stood the test of time. The Lincoln Versailles was seen as an upscale version of the existing Ford Granada a car with which it also shared a wheelbase. It was the smallest Lincoln car at the time of its launch, but that still did not stop it from carrying a heavy price tag that was above any of the other Lincoln models at the time. It packed a Ford Windsor V8 engine that generated up to 135 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque. 
The Versailles was Ford's response to the increasing consumer demand for fuel-efficient cars. However, these cars got a bad reputation. According to many forms and buyers, the Versailles had a continental grille, fake spare tie hump, and some leather thrown around inside. All of this was mirroring the earlier Cadillac Cimarron, which was unfortunate for the consumers because they were being ripped off. Fast forward, disappointing sales and better rival offerings eventually forced the Versailles off the market after the 1980 year with only less than 5,000 sold. Compared to the 80s, these luxury cars would cost at least five times more today. So would you buy one of these? Buying these classic American cars from the 1980s can be a rewarding experience in my opinion. This brings us towards the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will see you guys in my next video.